I'm going to read a poem of Coleridge's, one of my favourite poems, called Frost at Midnight, which is a wonderful evocation of the stillness and peace that he experienced as he settled down with his wife and became a father. So uh, here we go, Frost at Midnight. The frost performs its secret ministry, unhelped by any wind. The owlet's cry came loud, and hark again, loud as before. The inmates of my cottage, all at rest, have left me to that solitude which suits abstruser musings, save that at my side my cradled infant slumbers peacefully. Tis calm indeed, so calm that it disturbs and vexes meditation with its strange and extreme silentness. Sea, hill and wood, this populous village. Sea and hill and wood, with all the numberless goings-on of life, inaudible as dreams. The thin blue flame lies on my low-burnt fire and quivers not. Only that film which fluttered on the grate still flutters there, the sole unquiet thing. Methinks its motion in this hush of nature gives it dim sympathies with me who live, making it a companionable form whose puny flaps and freaks the idling spirit by its own moods interprets, everywhere echo or mirror seeking of itself and makes a toy of thought. But oh, how oft, how oft at school with most believing mind, presageful, have I gazed upon the bars to watch that fluttering stranger, and as oft with unclosed lids already had I dreamt of my sweet birthplace in the old church tower, whose bells, the poor man's only music, rang from morn to evening all the hot fair day, so sweetly that they stirred and haunted me with a wild pleasure falling on my ear, most like articulate sounds of things to come. So gazed I till the soothing things I dreamt held me to sleep, and sleep prolonged my dreams. And so I brooded all the following morn, awed by the stern preceptor's face, mine eye fixed with mock study on my swimming book, save if the door half opened, and I snatched a hasty glance, and still my heart leaped up, for still I hoped to see the stranger's face, townsman or aunt or sister more beloved, my playmate when we both were clothed alike. Dear babe, that sleep is cradled by my side, whose gentle breathings heard in this deep calm fill up the interspersed vacancies and momentary pauses of the thought. My babe so beautiful, it thrills my heart with tender gladness thus to look at thee and think that thou shalt learn far other lore and in far other scenes. For I was reared in the great city, pent mid cloisters dim, and saw naught lovely but the sky and stars. But thou, my babe, shall wander like a breeze by lakes and sandy shores, beneath the crags of ancient mountain and beneath the clouds, which image in their bulk both lakes and shores and mountain crags. So shalt thou see and hear the lovely shapes and sounds intelligible of that eternal language which thy God utters, who from eternity doth teach himself in all and all things in himself. Great universal teacher, he shall mould thy spirit, and by giving make it ask. Therefore all seasons shall be sweet to thee, whether the summer clothe the general earth with greenness, or the red breast sit and sing betwixt the cups of snow on the bare branch of mossy apple tree, while the night thatch smokes in the sun thaw, whether the eve drops fall heard only in the trances of the blast or if the secret ministry of frost shall hang them up in silent icicles, quietly shining to the quiet moon.